Well, as I said a short time ago, John Cooper QC and Peter Saunders from NAPAC join me now. Gentlemen, good to have you on the programme. And, and John Cooper, I mean, you know Robert Colliver. Are you surprised by the terms that he's used? Uh, he's a very experienced, very well-respected barrister. And so obviously I'm surprised and uh, concerned for him when we hear what's, what's being suggested. But I emphasise it's what's being suggested. There's a firestorm at the moment of accusation and counter-accusation. Uh, I'm interested also to know what role the police or the Crown Prosecution Service may have had in, 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 in propagating uh, 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 this particular line. Well, I can help you with that, actually, because we've had, sent, uh, we've had statements from Scotland Yard and the CPS saying that they would never use this type of language. So would that term ever be appropriate when discussing or describing a sex abuse of victim in court? No. Uh, I, I, think, I think it's common ground the use of the word predator is inappropriate, and let me make that very clear indeed. But it's also interesting looking at these statements from the Crown Prosecution Service and the police. They're saying they wouldn't use that word. What I'm interested in is whether any police reports or Crown Prosecution Service instructions to Mr. Colliver implied that that was a line that should or should not be taken. Uh, these things need to be looked into. And I, I am concerned at the moment, particularly uh, as, as, as Mr. Colliver in question is unable to contribute to the debate because of his professional codes, that we don't run away with it. With Peter, it. what do you make of these comments? As someone who represents abuse, uh, sex abuse victims every day. Every day. Um, well, as John said, wholly inappropriate. And, um, you know, where did it come from? Because this is the language, I mean, the, the term predator is the kind of term that we use for Jimmy Savile, for Stuart Hall, for the Fred and Rosemary Wests of this world, not a 13-year-old child. And I think one of the many consequences of this is going to be, and it's always difficult and very, very painful for victim survivors to come forward. This is just going to aggravate that and make even fewer people feel able to come forward if this kind of thing is going to happen. And I think uh, my colleague from the NSPCC, who just spoke earlier in your, in your package, you know, is absolutely right. The only predator in, in that courtroom on Monday was the convicted child abuser. Uh, John, so there's clearly a better way of, of describing yes, this girl, yes. it, even if that is a mitigating factor. And is it? I mean, is it a mitigating factor, the way that they've described this victim? Well, well Defence Council, what's interesting here, it's Prosecution Council that used that expression, which makes the whole thing even more mysterious. Let's not get too technical. No, of but... course. But, 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 but it is perfectly appropriate for any barrister, in proper measured terms, to put across the explanation or defence of their client however distasteful it may be, it's our duty to do so. But not to use, in, I emphasise this again, I really feel that use of the word predator is inappropriate in these circumstances. Absolutely. And Peter, do you, do you recognise that, that everyone is entitled to a fair trial, even if the language used, which we all agree wasn't right, but even mm. if descriptions might not be completely savoury every, to the every, rest of us? Absolutely, everybody is entitled to a fair trial, and, and uh, innocent until proven otherwise, absolutely. But there, there are boundaries, and sometimes these boundaries are overstepped, and this seems to be one of those cases. And the Home Affair, Affairs Select Committee in June said that this is an area that they've got to look at because, you know, too many victims are going before the courts and are being so re-traumatised that some, some are t attempting their own lives, and we've seen that very recently as well. I have to say, in the context of this case, uh, to call a 13-year-old a predator right. well, is, is, in my view, an appropriate. Well, okay, but what about the bigger picture when it comes to the ju judiciary system? Do you think that you guys are out of touch? Well, only last week we were talking about Stuart Hall and his sentence, which was doubled because we be would believe the judge was too lenient with him. Are you not in touch with the rest of us as a barrister? What do you think? Well, I'm one of those that uh, train uh, barristers how to deal with vulnerable witnesses. What about some of your colleagues and judges? What no, do I, I don't them? think we are. The, the criminal justice system for some years now has been putting in place various procedures to protect and assist vulnerable people in giving their evidence and being part of the criminal justice process. And it's very important that that happens. What do you think, Peter? I, I, I think if, if people were to come to NAPAC and listen to the hundreds of victim survivors that get in touch with us every single day, they would appreciate the gravity, the enormity of the damage done by these vile crimes. And I think it's time that the judiciary, and certainly there are people within the judiciary who get it. You know, Car Keir okay. Starmer has made all the right noises, but the rest need to follow suit as well, I think. We have to leave it there. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me tonight.